Howdy there folks and welcome into today's video. Hope you guys are doing great out there as always. First off, thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Today we are getting into how to scale from $100,000 to a million dollars. This video is gonna be highly relevant if anybody out there has around 100K, 200K in your account right now and you're trying to get it up to that million dollar plus number. And this video will honestly even be helpful to folks that maybe you got you know 70K, 80K in the market. I bet you there's some folks watching this that have 70K or 80K in the market right now. You know, even if you have some of those type of numbers, this video will be helpful. And the steps to achieve that when you're starting from, you know, let's say $1,000 or a few thousand dollars to 100K, there are different steps than actually we're going to go through here today when you're scaling from, let's say, uh, getting close to six figures or maybe even you're over six figures to a million dollars. Different steps. And it's a big thing. And, and by the way, if you're, if you're hitting the six figure club, congrats on that. This is the six figure club we have in the private stock group. It's a beauty. This is a heavy beast, man. The diamond award right there. But we want to go bigger, right? We want to get one of these bad boys, the uh, seven figure club. That's what everybody's trying to get that's watching this video here today, guys. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this as always. Basically, I'm just going to be giving out a lot of gems in this video, a whole lot of gems on, uh, you know, achieving this is something I've been through in the market. I remember, you know, hitting that, that six figure number and it is a... It is a good feeling, especially if you started out with, you know, very, very small amounts of money to hit six figures in the stock market is like a huge deal, huge deal. And you gotta understand it is achievable. You gotta take investing serious now. If you're not already, you like, you know, what are you waiting for? There was a million excuses I could have gave when I first started in the market and could have been like, oh, I'll, I'll do that in like three months from now or six months from now or next year, I'll get to that. Like, you gotta get in there. You gotta take this stuff serious and you gotta get ready to rock and roll now, okay? That's what's very, very important. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy this. All I ask in return is that you smash that like button for this video. I hope you guys enjoy this. And without further ado, let's get into these five steps. Alrighty folks, first step up here of these five. This is really, really important one. This is a psychological one. Some of these points are gonna be more things you have to do. Some of these are gonna be more mindset related things. This first one, let's be very clear, this is psychological, this is mindset, okay? Patience, patience. This is so vital, okay? I've been through this. And I've seen countless other folks go through this, okay? Where all of a sudden you're starting to get close to that six figure number, or you even eclipse that six figure number, right? You're at $100,000 plus in the stock market. And you start getting hungrier than ever. You want it now. You want a million dollars now. You want the millions now. And you've had success. You've climbed the ranks to get there, right? And so now you're hungrier than ever. You're more confident than ever. And sometimes when you're more confident than ever, hungrier than ever, it can maybe lead to a little uh, overextension. And I want to get this tomorrow. And, and oh my gosh, this is I achieved this and now I can get here tomorrow. And you got to understand when it comes to investing, patience is key, okay? Patience is key. If you're building a business, maybe you can keep going a thousand miles an hour. But I'm telling you, when it comes to investing, you gotta take a deep breath sometimes. You gotta adjust and you gotta focus on what you've achieved and that to get to that next level, let's not focus on getting there tomorrow. Let's put a plan together over the next several years on how we get there, okay? This is very, very important. And when you start to get to bigger and bigger numbers, you got to start understanding it's about calculating your moves. You, I, I've seen a lot of folks get up to 50K, 100K in the market, okay? But to get from 100K to a million from six figure club to seven figure club, you got to understand this is so important that it's about calculating your moves. This is really a calculated process and really figuring this out. And I can promise you, for every one person that became a millionaire from just like, you know, winging it and just doing something crazy, I can tell you the majority, high, high majority majority of folks that are millionaires and have a million dollars plus in stocks, like 99% of those folks made very, very calculated moves. They had patience. They understood this is still a process. And although they achieved success, getting to six figures plus, they understood, hey man, this is gonna take me a few years to get to this next level, which is seven figures, okay? Psychological step there, very, very important. Patience, let's get into the number two. Alrighty folks, second step up here. This is actually a more of a personal finance step of the bunch, but this is actually extremely important if you're trying to scale from six figures to seven figures. And there's another thing that gets people in a lot of trouble, okay? And you gotta avoid this, watch those expenses. Here's the thing. All of a sudden, you, you have six figures to your name. You're at $100,000 plus, right? 
And especially if you've built from the ground up and you, you know, it was just a few years ago, you had $1,000 in your account or 2,000 or 5,000, when all of a sudden you, you've achieved and you got to $100,000, it's a huge deal, right? And you are more than likely gonna feel really good about yourself. The issue is, what happens is a huge lifestyle creep, a huge lifestyle creep when you start to hit 100K plus, right? And it happens to a lot of folks out there. And all of a sudden you're, you wind up in a situation where you can't even funnel money into your accounts because all of a sudden you bought a new car, you bought a new house, you bought a new this, you bought a new that, right? And so you gotta make sure if you are gonna have a, you know, an elevated lifestyle, right? You gotta make sure you're still staying way under your expenses, okay? Because the way you got here, more than likely, the 90, 98% of people or 99% of people that, that get here do it because basically their income is much higher than their expenses and they're able to invest that money into the stock market, right? And build up and build up and that's how you get to 100K, okay? Maybe 1% or 2% of people like inherit money or something weird like that, right? But 98% plus of people, you're not gonna get to this number unless you basically have a higher income than your expenses, you throw that money in the market, you get gains on that and you keep that ball rolling, okay? And so you gotta remember kind of what got you there and don't have those expenses creep up too much. If, you know, I, a good rule of thumb is you need to have a minimum of 10% of your income going into your stock market portfolio each month. A minimum of 10%. You're doing great if you can go like 25%. If you can go like 25%, you're beasting, okay? That's absolutely beast. Like 25% of your income, you're doing great, right? And if you can boost it up even more numbers than that, you're just gonna, you're gonna make this game so much easier for you, right? You're gonna make, it's gonna be so much easier. And the other issue is, you know, once you start building up and all of a sudden you have 100K, and let's say you're able to funnel a thousand dollars a month in some people start looking at that and they're like oh it's only a thousand dollars and i already have a hundred k in my account and i don't know if it's really going to help that much yes it's going to help that much it's going to help in a massive massive way remember you didn't get there you didn't get there by by basically saying oh it's not that much money it's no okay it's going to add up to a huge amount over the coming years this is so key especially if you're picking successful stocks right so that's number two let's get into number three of these steps already folks third of these five steps up here very very important one this is a stock based one okay now is not the time to play it safe okay focus still on long term growth B stocks that you believe are going to grow exponentially over the next five, 10 years because you've put in the work as far as reading 10 Ks, listening to conference calls, right? And all those sorts of things, right? And you, so you put in that work, you understand the business model, you know what you're looking for in these stocks, right? And so this is still where your attention needs to be. Just because you reached hundred thousand dollars in the stock market doesn't mean, okay, well, now let's just funnel it all into Coca-Cola stock and Pepsi stock or something like that, okay? No, okay, remember, you're trying to get to this number, all right? And I can tell you, you're not gonna go from 100,000 to a million dollars putting all your money into Coca-Cola stock, okay? Or Pepsi stock. Not that those are necessarily bad stocks or something like that, it's just, it's gonna take a long dang time to get, to get from this number to that number, right? You still gotta focus on those growth beasts. You should absolutely own some divs. You should, and if divs, uh, that yeah, the slang for dividend stocks, just for anybody that doesn't know. And you should still be focused on some value stocks, right? Some dividends and some values, but growth stocks. Don't take your eye off the prize, okay? Just because now you got six figures in your stock market portfolio. Focus on those long-term growth beasts. I, I've been fortunate to, you know, been in a lot of those stocks over time. And these are really the ones that are gonna catapult you up to this number. I can tell you what catapulted me up to, you know, a million dollars plus in stocks was definitely, definitely a lot of those long-term growth beasts. Not to say the, the dividend stocks, the value stocks aren't, aren't the ones because you, there's some, you know, in certain markets, there's a lot of money to be made in value stocks and a lot of money to be made in dividend stocks. But I'm telling you, like, this is, this is more than likely gonna be the game changing stuff for you, right? Uh, but the, the big thing is you gotta understand these companies on a high level. You gotta understand what you're looking for in income statements and balance sheets. You gotta understand what you're looking for in a business model overall. 
and with a management team. These are extremely important things because without those, then it really becomes hard to pick successful long-term growth beasts. It's not like you can just look at, uh, oh, this company grew revenue 30%. Let me put my money in that one. It doesn't work like that, right? You gotta understand that business model, understand why they can continue to grow at 30% or understand why, oh man, no, this business is probably gonna grow 15% next year and then 5% the next year, right? You don't wanna get into a growth stock that is uh, at a very, very high valuation, let's say super high forward P or no forward P and all of a sudden their growth is decelerating. That is a lot of times when you'll get a stock to go down 50, 60, 70%. Like, and it's not about fingers, we're talking six to 12 months, right? I mean, if it's at a cheap valuation and it's a growth stock that's coming off crazy growth, but now the growth is expected to slow, but the valuation is cheap, let's say it's trading at a 4P of 15, 20, something like that, fair play. But if you're in a stock that has a crazy valuation on it, meaning no forward P or forward P uh, at 50 plus, 100 plus, and that growth is coming down massively, a lot of times those stocks all of a sudden are, are chopped in half real quick, okay? And uh, a lot of times it's all of a sudden about, whoa, whoa, they're, they're not going to grow at that rate. And if it already has a high valuation on it, man, it, you know, there's a difference. Sometimes in the stock market, you get in a stock and it goes down 10, 20%. But I'm telling you, if you get in the wrong growth stock, you're going down 50, 60, 70% real quick. Okay. Very, very important. So focus on the growth beast, but make sure you know what you're dang looking for. Okay. Let's get into number four. Alrighty folks, the fourth step of these five steps up here. This is very important, okay? When, when, you're, when you're climbing those ranks uh, from, the, from the go, right? Sometimes you can get away with, you, you didn't build a strong portfolio right off the jump, right? But now that you're reaching bigger numbers, six figures or over six figures, right? You wanna build out a strong portfolio, at least five B stocks, at least five stocks that you can be super, super proud of that you own in your portfolio, at least five. You can own 10 maybe even, okay? Uh, at the same time, you don't wanna get too over diversified, like own like, let's say 60 stocks or something like that. And I've definitely seen that before. If you're gonna own 60 stocks, might as well just buy an S&P 500 index fund at that time, right? You're not really a stock picker. You're just throwing money into everything essentially, right? So you need to be in at least five B stocks. So for this example, like like a, an ideal portfolio in my eyes for somebody that's at 100K or roughly around 100K and is trying to get to a million dollars plus would be three growth stocks, one dividend stock, and one value stock. And if you wanna expand this, let's say to 10 stocks, right? You feel more comfortable having 10 stocks in your portfolio. And as your portfolio gets a little bigger and a little bigger, you should add more stocks, right? When you're at $5,000 portfolio, you could be in like two stocks, right? Uh, and, and then all of a sudden you're at, let's say 50K, maybe now you're in three, four, five stocks. Then all of a sudden you're at 100K, maybe now you're in six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 stocks, right? And so if you wanna say, let's do a 10 stock example, let's say you got 10 B stocks in your portfolio, right? Then maybe we have like, you know, six growth stocks, two dividend stocks, two value stocks, something like that, right? Or you could even replace one of the growth stocks with what's called a spec stock, right? A spec stock is essentially a company that hopefully has huge growth ahead of it, but it might be much smaller cap company, it might be seen as a riskier investment. Maybe this is um, a market capitalization of $100 million or a few hundred million dollars or something like that, all right? So that's what you gotta really think about. Build out a strong beast portfolio. You got some real money in this game now. You're at six figures or near six figures or a little over six figures, right? You got some real money at stake. Time to build out a strong beast portfolio that is gonna help you grow to that million dollar plus number, okay? Let's get into the last step of these five steps now. Alrighty folks, the fifth and last one. Oh, this is a holy smokes, this ain't no joke, it's extremely important one, okay? And I got three points to make off of this one. When you get more money, you know what happens? The tax man, he's there more than ever. Watch the tax man. Watch the tax man. Three core points I wanna make in regards to the tax man and as you get to six figures and hopefully scaling to seven figures, okay? Keep in mind, make sure as the numbers get bigger, you are clean. What I mean is clean, by, by clean essentially, is make sure you are doing your taxes right. Make sure uh, you know everything is lining up as far as the numbers go. Because not a lot of people know this, but the IRS can go three years back when it comes to tax returns, okay? So as the numbers get bigger and bigger, there's a higher probability you can get on the IRS's radar, all right? So there's a higher probability you can get on their radar. So essentially, 
Keep in mind, the numbers get bigger, you, there's a, you're a higher target, right? And they can go three years back and you don't wanna wind yourself up into a situation where maybe you didn't uh, you know, have some certain gains over here that you didn't write down on the, to the taxes or, or situations like that, right? You could run yourself into a lot of trouble and then you know, if they find a bunch of stuff, they're like, oh wow, this person made th you know, $45,000 in gains uh, two years ago in, 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 uh, you know, through stocks and they didn't, they didn't uh, you know, pay us for that they didn't even write those numbers down you know keep in mind you're gonna likely be on the, the the naughty list forever and that's why you hear about certain folks getting audited time and time again because likely they found something the mistakes and now they're like oh we're gonna audit them every time and as as you're building your wealth bigger and bigger all of a sudden you're in this situation where you're always tied up into these audits and in those sorts of situations no one wants to be in those sorts of situations right so watch the tax man remember they can go three years back okay next up here long-term gains as the numbers get bigger and bigger okay the long-term gains become more and more important so basically how you're taxed essentially is you know imagine you make really good money uh, at your job maybe you make quarter million a year 200k a year 100k a year whatever right or from your your business let's say you, you got a good business and you're making six figures plus a year right keep in mind your tax rate might be high 20s maybe even low to mid 30s percent okay never mind if you got state taxes on top of that now if you're taking short-term gains, you're gonna be taxed at that tax rate versus long-term gains, you're usually taxed at maybe 15 to 20%. So we're talking about a massive difference in money. All you gotta hold the stock for is 365 days. 365 days and then you can take your gain, okay? Now, I try to never necessarily make a decision to buy or sell a stock based upon necessarily the tax man, but it is important to keep in the back of your mind that, oh, hmm, I could hold the stock for an extra three weeks or I could sell out today. And uh, if I sell out today, I gotta pay short-term gains at, at a 33% tax rate, let's say, versus if I just wait three weeks, I pay 15% or 19.6% or 18.6% or whatever it is, right? So this is very, very important, all right? Next one up here, this one catches a lot of people into some trouble, all right? Is essentially, imagine you make really good money on stock. Let's say you make, um, you know, you make $40,000 profit on a stock, something like that. What most people do is right away, uh, they're gonna go invest that money. So let's say you put $40,000 into a, a stock position, right? And then it doubles, so now you, you sold it, and now you have $80,000. But you have $40,000 of taxable money there, right? Well, what a lot of people do is they just invest that right away into the market without even thinking about taxes, right? Because it's not taken out, especially if you come from a, you know, a workplace where the money's automatically deducted from your paycheck. You're not used to even thinking in a context of like, oh, I gotta pay taxes on this, right? So imagine, you know, it's, it's November and you take this $40,000 gain over here in the stock, you put that 80K in another stock, right? Now all of a sudden, in that tax year, you need to pay that $40,000 tax gain you just, you just uh, you, you know, had there. Well, you put that money into another stock, maybe that stock is having some troubles a little bit, right? And so it actually went down in the short term. So that 80,000 is now 60,000, right? And, but you're already in the next calendar year, and all of a sudden you're like, shoot, I need to pay taxes. And if you don't have the, that type of money around to pay the taxes, because now you're gonna probably pay at least 10,000, if not $15,000 or, or more on that $40,000 gain, right? And especially depending on if it's a short term or long term, you could maybe even pay higher than that. All of a sudden you're like, shoot, I need to sell uh, stocks to like pay my, the tax man now, or I'm gonna wind up in a, another bad situation, right? And so all all of a sudden you could be put in a situation where now you got to sell that stock that maybe is down right to just pay that tax gain so keep in mind as you make more and more money in the stock market you got to think about the taxes and how this can impact you and, and plot these things out remember I just told you guys if you're gonna reach from from six figures to seven figures calculated moves 98 plus percent of people that go from here to here it's very, very calculated moves. We've been fortunate. I've seen over 100 folks in the private stock group reach those sorts of numbers. And I can tell you, I, I don't know any of them that didn't get there without calculated moves and really thinking things through and, and plotting it out and kind of putting things together and, and things like that, guys. So this is extremely important. All these things come in and factor in, okay?